I think Renal the innovation post Simplicity 3 is in a very exciting place actually. I think Simplicity 3, of course the results were disappointing initially, but what they really did is they caused us to have a good look at the data, a good look at the uh, background uh, to the whole process of renal innovation, both encompassing patient selection, uh, the tools we use, and then really to think about how uh, we can apply these more effectively moving forward. And now we've got a series of studies which are about to start, uh, looking at renal innovation. Uh, we've refined who we're going to do the procedure in, refined the procedure more, and importantly we've also controlled more carefully for the, the drugs which patients are on to ensure that we have the, the best possibility of getting a, a, a good pressure drop with the technique and also with the minimum degree of variability and this is very very important for clinical trial design. So overall I hope that in the next 18 months to two years we'll see a series of studies uh, which will re-explore the, this therapy and hopefully show it uh, that there's a true benefit to the innovation in terms of reducing blood pressure. Well certainly people asked after HTN3 uh, if there were technical problems with the application of the denovation therapy itself uh, and I think this is one perhaps which uh, we don't know all the answers to. Certainly we can see there are some geographic differences in the, in the results which people get um, but we also know that the technologies themselves have uh, advanced and improved over the last uh, 12 months. We now have most catheter systems which rather than just doing a single uh, denovation uh, at each individual location on the vessel uh, apply multiple burns simultaneously and of course this uh, offers the hope that we have wider coverage of denovation and also we have better contact with the wall uh, and also we have more of a helical pattern which we know uh, gives the best chance of uh, having a successful denovation. So one of the big learning things we've found from the HTN3 study is there are certain groups who potentially uh, could benefit more. Probably one of the biggest groups uh, which will benefit from denovation therapy uh, are patients who have an elevated diastolic blood pressure. Or put another way, these are patients with isolated, uh, without isolated systolic hypertension. If you just have an elevated systolic pressure and your diastolic pressure is low, we know that these patients are less likely to benefit from renal denovation therapy. And we think the mechanism for this is that if your diastolic pressure is low and you have systolic hypertension, you tend to have a very, very stiff aorta. Now, denovation itself can't alter the, the, the anatomy, uh, the calcification levels which are in the aorta itself. However, if your diastolic pressure is raised, in addition to having a high systolic, then your resistance often in the peripheral vessels is higher and the denovation itself by reducing sympathetic tone can cause dilatation of these vessels, reduce your diastolic pressure and of course bring both your systolic and mean pressure down. So this patient population to identify uh, these is very, very important and most of the studies moving forward now have uh, got an exclusion uh, criteria of having a diastolic blood pressure above a certain high threshold. This is very important. One of the other areas uh, where people looked at uh, after the HGM3 and were very interested in was the effects of different racial groups, particularly the fact that the African American population appeared not to have um, as big a response. I think really now when we've looked at this data more carefully, we don't actually think that it's necessarily one racial group or another, but perhaps other things associated with uh, different racial groups. So it may well be where they live, it will be socioeconomic status, uh, and this may have influenced pharmacological prescribing and drug taking patterns. So we know from looking at the HGN3 data that it's certain geographies in the United States, whether you're Caucasian or whether you're African American, you have very, very good blood pressure results. We know in others, uh, that the difference appears bigger between the Caucasian and African American groups. And what tends to follow the differences in these two different groups and geographies is uh, wealth. So it really follows socioeconomic uh, patterns very, very closely. Uh, so rather than uh, essentially excluding one group or another moving forward, we know that it's likely that these socioeconomic patterns alter the pharmacological compliance of these patients. So we know studies going forward, we're going to pay very close attention to ensuring that patients have 
good compliance, uh, making sure they're taking their medications, checking it using urine screening, and in some of the studies, making sure that they're off all medications alone. So we can exclude drugs as a potential confounder of the studies and just look in the purest form to see if the renal denervation causes blood pressure to fall.